<laughs> so it's Monday and we have an appointment for George's wheelchair services. Stop it. Stop it. We've got an appointment for George for the wheelchair services for his buggy, push chair, etc. So George isn't at school yet because he's got to come with and Matthew isn't very well. Are you Math? You're not feeling very well. What, you want to see it? You're not feeling very well. George, stop it. So, somehow we've got to take George... What? Yeah, we've seen it. So somehow I've got to take George into this appointment on my own because obviously Amy's got to stay here with Matthew. Um, and then I've got to take him to school from the wheelchair services, which is going to be fun. And I've got to take him in there 10 minutes before. So I hope there's somewhere for him to wait or some toys to play with those. It's going to be fun. I'm back from George's wheelchair access, wheelchair appointment. Um, it was extremely distressing for George um, for multiple reasons. First of all, first one, routine of going to school this morning out the window. Um, obviously he comes down, sees his uniform, puts that on. That was the first thing he did that. Amy said he was not very good with that, probably because Matthew wasn't putting his uniform on. So when he seen Matthew in his pyjamas because he wasn't very well, obviously he didn't understand why he's wearing school uniform. So that didn't start well for Amy this morning when she was up with him early. Then I took him in the car, which is the second thing. He, when he goes in the car, he thinks he's going somewhere else um, and not school. So when I drove past the school, he was happy, he was shouting and fine. And then we went past the indoor play which he thought obviously was where he was going, which is on an industrial state, which is where this appointment was for the wheelchair services. So I took him past that, so then he started having a meltdown. And then I found the place eventually, which was a bit of a nightmare, because the sat nav didn't take me where it was meant to take me. Um, found the place, I took him in, and it's basically a factory with offices at the front. So I took him in for the appointment, and he wanted to basically go in the factory where you could see them fixing and making wheelchairs up and stuff like that. Careful, leave the camera alone. Um, so he really didn't understand why I couldn't just let him run around the factory. Leave it, Matthew. Leave it, please. Leave it, please, Matthew. Leave it. Um, yeah, so that was extremely difficult and... Sorry, let me just put you back. Matthew's trying to grab you. Um, and then in the at the back of the factory where the offices are, um, you could basically the doors were open everywhere, so he just wanted to run around, which he couldn't do, which then started off a meltdown. Um, he just wanted to run around and explore the building, which obviously we weren't there to do. And then when we went to the point, the guy was great. Don't get me wrong, he was fab. He didn't take very long, but really they need to rethink about what they do. Why on earth I had to take him today to that appointment is beyond me. Taking him in a building like that, um, okay, it's a wheelchair services place, so we're not getting a wheelchair for him, we're getting like a buggy or a pram or a pushchair, whatever you may call it. So I don't know why on earth I had to take him into an appointment where basically all they did, they weighed him, which I could have done and told him, they didn't even check his height, they measured his, I don't know what you would call it, basically from his knee to his bum, which I could have done, and they measured from his knee to his foot. I suppose just to get the length of how long his limbs are, basically, to see where he'd fit the pram, which, or push chair that they're planning to give him, which is a McLaren Major, is what they said. They didn't have any there for me to look at, um, but they said it's basically a basic push chair. Obviously, it's going to be larger, I suppose, um, and he said it goes up to way above the weight limit he would ever need. So, I mean, he said he's nothing to him, so then the weight's not a problem. Um, and it'll basically, it's just like a fold-up pusher. But why I had to take him, and like I said, I know it's a wheelchair services place, so I can understand a lot of the people that go there haven't got autism, but, you know, they're in wheelchairs or they need, 
transportation needs, or whatever it is, whatever it is, electric wheelchairs, standard wheelchairs, I don't know, and a lot of them probably haven't got autism, or, but surely they have a lot of children with cerebral palsy, and I can understand them having to go, because if, that some of them might need, like you said, he needs absolutely no, like, lumbar support in the chair, he doesn't need a certain fittings, like, for his neck, if you've got, like, my sister's got cerebral palsy, and she doesn't have it, but some of them will have, like, a neck support to hold the head, and things like that, maybe they wanted to, but they could ask me that on the phone, there was absolutely no need for him to go, the guy could see he was distressed, he spent the whole time in the appointment, having a meltdown and screaming and kicking the door to get out. So I had to hold him, physically hold him, and he's getting strong for a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, whilst he just went through some of these basic questions which I could have answered on the phone. So I think I'll make a suggestion to them that they really need to look at that. Not It's not going to make no difference to George now, but to help other people in the future because there's absolutely no reason why he, there was any point of him going up there. Um, it would have been better him just going to school, me going up there and seeing them and then saying... Right, what is it you need? It would have took two minutes on the phone. I would have got their measurements for them. Maybe they don't want to do that in case I measure them wrong or I don't give the correct information and they order the wrong or make the wrong thing. Um, maybe that's to do with it, I don't know. But um, I think it would make their life so much easier if they just communicated with us a bit better than that. Um, than a letter saying, bring him up, which, you know, and then he's had to go to school. Then I took him to school in the car, which he doesn't do. That's why we need the buggy, because he walks to school um, in the pram. So when I take him to school in the car, he doesn't understand then why I'm going to school in the car, because he thinks we're going out for the day for a Charlie Boys outing, which didn't go down well when we got there. And then it was one of the less familiar members of staff that come and pick him up, so that didn't help. But he went down, I'm sure he went down, he, once he once he realised I'm in school, he took a hand and he went. So, um, he's in, I'm sure he'll have a good day, but he, the, the whole meltdown totally, completely could have been avoided, stressing the child out to that extent, um, and making him that anxious, where he's having a complete, you know, like a terrible meltdown. I mean, this is like one of the worst ones I've seen in quite a long time. And for the fact of measuring, two measurements and weighing him, I could have done that, I could have done that for them. Or at the least they could have told the school this is what we need and let the school measure them if they want to trust someone at the school to do it, a nurse or a doctor at the school. Rather than taking the child up there, or it just seems crazy. Maybe they didn't understand what his needs were, maybe they, they, they didn't get the information that he's just autistic and that physically, or he, he possibly has got hypermobility, but he hasn't got some of the massive needs that probably some people have when they're sizing people for wheelchairs. But I'm sure it says on their thing what you needed, that it was a, bu a buggy or a pushchair or a pram or whatever you want to call it. So I don't know, but that, that I think needs to be looked at. Not for George's case, because hopefully this will be the one and only time we have to do it, because hopefully by the time he would ever get to the stage of replacing it, we won't need it. Hopefully we've got him in a situation where his awareness is better, his danger awareness and his safety, his understanding is better of walking and not falling to the floor and things like that. So anyway, that was a really rubbish start to the morning um, and I hope his afternoon gets better I'm sure it will I had to leave his pram there to bring him back because I'm not going to pick him up in the car because it'll just be a meltdown three which I don't need today and he certainly doesn't need after that he'll be tired when he gets home today because of that he will be tired um, but anyway not much more I can do about that Amy's went for a coffee and to take four bags of clothes to the Salvation Army which just for you and I, the clothes are in perfect condition. There's nothing wrong with them. They just, they've fallen out of favour with Amy. <laughs> so, well, it helps people. They're in good condition, shoes and all sorts she's taken and clothes and stuff. So we normally put them in the Salvation Army one. I don't know why, we just tend to use that one more. So she's gone to get rid of them, which have been stored in the house for since Christmas, I suppose. Um, so she'll do that. And then when she gets back, I'll go and pick George up. And it's actually quite a nice day today. It's not raining. There's no hail at the moment. Um, and Matthew hopefully will be all right to go to school tomorrow. But we'll catch up with George when he gets home and we'll fill you in on the type of day he's had once I read his book anyway. So we'll catch you in a little while. So later than planned. Um, I didn't do an update when the, when um, I got back. For the simple reason that Matthew was still feeling a bit... Uh, so I didn't really want to
took a camera in his face and it's a bit difficult to film George running around the house like a maniac when Matthew's on the sofa not feeling well so um, yeah I apologise for the lack of twins in the end of the vlog um, George's book his book that they fill out every day just to say what he's been up to um, said he was a little unsettled when he came into the class which I spoke about and said about um, but he settled more after snack time where he ate his apple um, in a good tic tac session and rebound session this afternoon and he also had two wow moments which are like where he does something good and they said describing the new fan in class saying wow and butterfly and another one for passing the light toy back in the story um, I'm not quite sure what that means but when he does something cool they normally fill up on these wow moments and we've got like a big bunch of them now so yeah so they said he was he took a while to settle down um, as I thought he would um, but George was fine though he's, he's been running around like a maniac Matthew did park up a bit more towards bedtime um, I think it's still 50-50 whether he'll be in school tomorrow he's still coughing um, it's not so much the cough, we're not keeping him off the cough, it's more his temperature yesterday was up and down, up and down and we couldn't, couldn't figure out whether it would be best to send him, I think we did the right thing keeping him off because if it rises up they'll only ring us to tell us to pick him up and he did have a nap this afternoon, Matthew never ever naps so the fact that he had a nap shows that he's still not 100% what he wasn't today we'll see what he's like in the morning when he wakes up but he was saying he was hungry today, he did eat a bit of tea a little bit of pizza, a few french fries, um, he had a pack of crisp, a bit of fruit, um, so he ate a little bit today, we'll see what he's like in the morning and then make a decision then, but hopefully he'll be back in, if not he'll have a day at home and I'll catch up on some painting while he's relaxing, some painting of the room that should have been done before Christmas that isn't done, but anyway yeah that's it for now, so I'll end the vlog there um, and we'll hopefully catch you in the next day or two when hopefully both are well and we're feeling a little bit more like ourselves around the house but we'll catch you soon